How are we doing? My name is Patrick Foley, or Patrick 4D, as you might know me, <laughs> Kaka. Uh, on social media, I'm a 3D artist based in Atlanta, Georgia, specializing primarily in the uh, photorealistic food product industry, I guess. Uh, I do a lot of uh, random stuff that's got me here. But essentially, here's some of my links at Patrick underscore 4D uh, and some other stuff. And this is a lot of the food renders I've been doing recently. You can see there. Uh, there is me in the natural habitat, usually. It's in the spot. I make one of these daily renders a day making food renders. Uh, it's quite a vibe, no doubt. Uh, I began my career actually in the film world. I was a director of photography. I went to SCAD Atlanta, where I was doing uh, director of photography work. And here are some of the stills. You know, I was shaping lights around, using cameras, um, you know, really morphing around these lights in real time and actually um, kind of projected into my 3D career. So you can see some of the stills from the commercial products or the, the music videos here. Eventually I got into 3D midway through my college career just by accident in the editing bays. They had this program called Cinema 4D where I was just messing around, made an Instagram account and started posting stuff on the daily pretty much from the get-go and Right off the bat was was kind of getting some client work and the the stuff was was kind of working for me. And uh, then we then we went down a dark path here and uh, we started somehow getting into these botched characters I called them. Uh, so I took our our famous characters that we loved back in the day and just ruined them. And I thought that was just such a vibe. I thought it was fun. People liked it on on social media and uh, I had I had a lot of fun with this. And when I say they were botched. They got really botched. Like we, we went dark with it. Um, you, you got Meg Griffin, Eric Cartman, Jimmy Neutron. And uh, so I had a, a long history of different types of series before I eventually started getting into food, but food within the cartoon scene. So I, I started making these renders and I was like, oh, what if I made like all these crazy food related things in cartoons that we all loved, like the Krabby Patty or the Homer Simpson donut or the purple flirt from Jimmy Neutron and we brought it into real life. And so that was like, cool. Now that I can do that, what if I actually made some actual food and started doing something real? So I started making all these different types of food products on the daily Instagram. We're still doing these once a day. And uh, I had fun with it. And it was kind of a niche space that I found myself in. You know, we got the McDonald's, we got some uh, peanut M&Ms and I also combined some of these brands. This ultimately turned into uh, more food related renders, different kinds of things here, whether it was like sandwiches, ramen, which we actually did not too long ago. Where's Matt? Uh, there he is. Yeah. And the Kit Kat. Uh, and eventually this turned into a different series, getting fun with it. We had all this stuff. I was like, what if we combined different luxury brands with these food renders? And uh, what would that look like? What if uh, Louis Vuitton came out with like little cookies uh, or Chanel? So. That was a fun one. And, um, you know, just throughout the career, I, it, because of social media and the name I've gotten on there, it allowed me to start uh, seeing that people really wanted to see how I light stuff, how this stuff came to be. So I started releasing HDRI packs on my p4d.store site. And um, yeah, we, a lot of stuff has happened to get to this point. And we're, now we're here at NAB. I'm really appreciative that Maxon sent me up to to come here because I've been using their products for so long and <clears throat> especially now that we got ZBrush in the line, uh, it's just a perfect fit. So we're going to get into some stuff, but uh, I wanted to show you guys what this stuff looks like on the daily basis uh, because every day I'll release a new food render uh, and just a warning, this is going to be in vertical format because that's, that's how it is on social media these days. So we're going to open up a file here if I can figure out how to, let's see, there we go. And I'll play this guy, let's see what happens.
right, so there we got that. That is pretty much, appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. That's kind of what we got there, so I thought it'd be fun. We only have like about 50 minutes, so I wanted to show how fast it really is from the ZBrush to Cinema 4D Pipeline and to make one of these from scratch. So instead of kind of having a bunch of project files where I'm doing a little bit of something, uh, might as well make it from scratch. So I thought, coming from Atlanta, we like our chicken biscuits here, and so I thought it'd be good to make a chicken biscuit sandwich with uh, stuffed drizzle on top, and then I'm just gonna click render here. If you guys can see that. And so it is going to turn out something like this, kind of right off the bat. And we got, you know, fully textured thing. And I left the the sauce that we'll be making uh, untextured and we'll be doing that together. Otherwise, I think we'd go over time. Let's kind of get into it. Let's get into ZBrush and we can get it going. Let me see here. Okay, cool. All right, so we're at ZBrush right now. I got my custom layout, but if I do pick one of these options that I'll be using, I'll kind of explain where you get it. Uh, but just for the presentation, I thought it'd be a little bit faster to start off with a Dynamesh sphere. Um, if you're not familiar with ZBrush, I always start off with one of these guys. And Dynamesh being pretty much topology creating on the fly. And <clears throat> usually I start with just a simple shape. I usually don't start, you think of a chicken biscuit we're gonna make a the biscuit part first. So usually someone might start off with a cylinder. I'm gonna start off with a sphere just like this. And I'm actually going to shrink it a little bit real quick. Uh, so we have a smaller size and a pretty much smaller resolution here. And right off the bat, I'm just gonna start carving stuff out. Holding down control, we're just kind of carving stuff here like this. And actually before I do that, I'm gonna turn off perspective gonna drag up, get it to here, re-dynamesh, control and drag. And we can see starting to kind of look like a biscuit here, but we need to do some more. Uh, and once we get here, I'm just gonna mask the lower part and invert the mask by holding down control and tapping. And we wanna kind of bevel this bottom edge here. So we're gonna go uh, to the deformation tab. And where's that over here? And take the contrast slider and just drag it back a little bit. So you get a nice kind of fall off there. Remesh there. We got some, some stuff going on here so I can just invert and maybe just blur this stuff out. Totally fine. We're just building the shape at this point. So once we have that, uh, usually what I like doing is Z remeshing, just cleaning up the topology over here. And uh, if this setup looks a little bit different, I'm a lefty, so everything's kind of switched over. And we're gonna go here and just click half, Z remesh. Looking good so far. We're now, gonna, we're now going to divide this up a few times. So maybe one, two, three, let's try. Uh, now we got a very high poly mesh here, about 302,000 active points. Uh, and one of my favorite tabs <clears throat> on the left here happens to be the surface tab. And it opens up this thing, this noise generator, which I love. And it gives you like an approximation of what this stuff's gonna look like. So if I just increase the noise scale, really far up. You can see what's kind of happening here. And then because it's a biscuit, we want to kind of shrink this stuff down. So on the Y scale, let's go all the way like this. And you can see it's already kind of giving you that like biscuity feel, uh, but on the top and bottom, it's not actually distorting. And that's what we want. Click OK. And then we're going to mask by noise. So the way we're going to do this is actually masking out this texture on this biscuit, and then we're going to reverse inflate it. And that sounds a lot more complex than it really is. I'm just gonna click mask by noise. Now we're like, okay, cool, we got this noise here. Uh, and now I'm gonna go back to the deformation tab. I'll do this the first time, but I actually have a custom menu um, that usually pops up, but I guess it's not popping up well right here. So we're gonna go to the deformation tab and reverse inflate. And you can see I have a lot of control uh, just kind of making the shape here. And you can, you can go a real inflate or reverse. I kind of like inverting it here. Uh, you can see you got the divots in there <clears throat> and that looks good. So now I'm gonna shift D a few times, go back to its first subdivision level and unmask, and then just kind of clean up this top area a little bit. We're still kind of in symmetry mode, probably don't need to be. Just clean some stuff up. And then once it's cleaned up like this, I kind of like adding a little bit of height to it and maybe inflating it while we're in that first subdivision level. 
And now that we're right here, everything, once we add all these details back, we have this main shape and all these details, but it kind of looks a little bit more inflated. And that's kind of what we're going for. So yeah, I'd probably spend a little bit of time on this on the usual live streams. Shout out to Discord, Kaka. And uh, yeah, so maybe I'll do a little bit of that. Go back to the first subdivision level. Add a little bit of stuff here. We don't need to be in symmetry, but for this case, it's probably fine right now. And the biscuit's good for me right now. That's good. Um, we can just move on to the chicken. So let's make a nice piece of uh, chicken here. Let's go sub tool, insert sphere. And again, just scaling these things down to where you think you would need to. Shrinking it down with the, uh, the scale tool here. Then really basic stuff, just uh, kind of forming this here with the, the gizmo. And once we're at this point, I think I would probably want to Dynamesh real quick. And because we're at this scale, it's not going to be too crazy right off the bat at 128 for the resolution. And I like taking this gear right here. You can only do this feature right here if you have zero subdivision levels. Keep that in mind. But I'm going to go to Bend Curve. And you can see you got a dot here and a dot here. And now we can transform these guys right here just like that. And every time you add one piece of resolution, you have a new kind of uh, curve to mess with. Kind of slide these around, add another one. Just randomizing it, that's, that's kind of what I like about food, the food game because even at its highest level, you're getting these really random shapes. Like you're not gonna have two chicken nuggets or chicken biscuits that look identical. They're just, they're made all separately. Even if they're made completely the same way, they're gonna be like that. So to get out of this, we're gonna go here to this gear, except that's fine with me. And then uh, we're going to Z remesh one more time. Looks good, very basic still. I'm probably gonna take the move tool by going B, M, T. Just moving this guy in. Again, being rough with it, that's totally cool. Just like that. And then once you're at this place, I think we can actually just add some subdivisions here. So. Control D, one, two, three times is fine. Now we're gonna go to our uh, menu that we like so much, which is the surface menu, noise. Do the same thing we already did. Let's go here, and then this one, you're actually just trying to make sure um, you're getting the scale of maybe a piece of chicken. So whatever looks right here, you're probably, you're probably right. This looks fine. Let's go and take the strength down a tiny bit. So the cavities are a little bit deeper. Hit OK. Looks fine to me. Mask by noise. And let's go to the deformation, reverse inflate. And you can see right off the bat, we're getting some really nice, even though it's randomized noise, it's starting to look like something. So that's probably good. Somewhere around there. Looks like a chicken tender or something like that. We're gonna go to our first subdivision level here and inflate a little bit, just randomly inflate this thing. And that's also by inflating it, you're gonna get rid of those weird um, artifacts you might get from doing the inverted inflate earlier. And it's really good to do this on the first subdivision level. Once we have something we like, we can add those details back. And yeah, like I said, I might spend a little bit more time if I was just at the crib doing the Discord streams but we should be good. How many, anyone in the audience have, how many pieces of chicken should we add on this biscuit? Anyone? We got two, three, six? Jesus. Okay, I'm th let's, let's try two or three, let's go here. I like the sixth one if I was just eating one of these, but uh, let's see here. Let's go over here, let's go duplicate. Just add one of these up. Go to our first subdivision level. And it should be fairly easy just to merge this thing around without causing too much destruction or difference here. We're actually gonna rotate this a little bit maybe, even more randomization, just like this. Again, being kind of sloppy with it, but you get the idea. Like 
adding the detail back by just hitting D a few times. And I believe on this we have four subdivision levels. So that's, that's probably good. <clears throat> um, and the next thing we want to do is let's add some syrup or something. And one of my favorite techniques here is actually using one of the mask brushes. Uh, typically, I would do something like this where I just draw here, but I, I kind of like the way the, uh, the mask curve pen works. So you just select this, and then the same way you would drizzle on maybe a regular piece of chicken, um, keeping in mind the scale of the brush here, this red thing, that'll be kind of like the girth of the, the sauce or the syrup. So we're gonna go over here and just mask around. And when you hold down control and just kind of drag around a few times, you're gonna get kind of that result here. That probably looks good with me. I'm gonna go sub tool, extract, accept. Now we have this piece just chilling here. Uh, but we wanna make this look super harsh. That looks like sauce that's been out for like 10 years and is just like congealed. We don't want that. Right off the bat, we're going to essentially just dynamesh this already getting that really smooth result. We could have gone with a higher one, but because we're going for like that really smooth look, I think we're totally fine. Let's maybe clean up this area, redynamesh. Over here, just so we're not getting any of those weird artifacts, should be fine. And the next thing I'd probably wanna do is go to the deformation tab again, and let's go inflate this thing remesh and polish and you see the polishing does a lot just to make it look a little bit more sauce like um, we're really making it vibey in here so we're going to go actually after this and take the another brush i like is the bsh oh this will click oh i've had this problem before i guess uh you got to click this with a mouse here I think that was in a tablet setting. But um, yeah, so we're looking good here, and this is the snake hook, which is essentially, I guess, what you would think of if you heard of the word snake hook. Um, you're just dragging this along, you're activating this thing called Sculptress Pro, which I'll show you. If you don't have Sculptress Pro enabled and you drag out here, it's kind of dragging the, the topology, but it's stretching it and it's not really reactive. You'd have to keep dynameshing, which would be fine, but when you have this activated, you can have a really nice dynamic topology as you draw, and that's perfect for things like the drip of sauce, like this. And if you hold down Alt, it actually follows the topology really well. So you can see I dragged down, but it actually followed the curvature of the topology. So if you hold down Alt, that's a little tip there. Let's go over here. I'm just gonna finesse this just a little bit. We say finessing the sauce in the industry. Cool. So that looks good to me. Um, once you're at this point, you can make it a little bit more crazy just like that. We're having fun with it. Once you're at something like this, maybe turning off Sculptress Pro, going B-I-N or the inflate brush, making this thing look globby, kind of cool. And uh, right after that, just uh, remeshing, getting some nice clean topology so that when we start smoothing things, it's, it's much better. Cool. Looks good to me. A lot of times I like using the dynamic uh, subdivision here, which I guess I can't click those with the, anytime these, these things pop up, uh, I gotta use a mouse. And typically that's not a thing, but we changed some tablet settings. So that's a thing. Cool. So that'll be like a preview. It's not actually topology that's there, but it's essentially just like a, I guess like shading it. Looks fine. Uh, and that'll give us a nice preview there. Do we want to add a third piece of chicken? Is that your, okay, okay. I knew the answer to that. Okay, so we're gonna go here and the last thing, sub tool, duplicate, drag it up. This is absurd. Oops, I had it masked. Let's drag it up there. This is just gargantuan at this point. Um, it's ridiculous. Make it a little bit different. You get the idea. Let's go to the clay brush. Let's 
And the nice thing about having all these subdivision levels is the you don't have to worry too much about, like this looks like a mess at this point, but the details are all there. They're just baked in to the other subdivision levels. Boom. And right after that, I think we're good to, again, duplicate this guy, move this all the way up, maybe uh, inverting it a little bit, right, just keep it like that. Rota oops, turning off symmetry by hitting X, rotating this around. And like we said before, we have subdivision levels. So now let's just take the move brush and just make it look like it's got some weight to it. This is a very, <laughs> odd uh, sandwich we got here. Just The surface area just doesn't make sense. That's, uh, that's the beauty of it. Cool. I think that looks decently fine. And uh, cool. Looks good to me. Now we're going to add some, uh, we're gonna add like a napkin or a piece of foil underneath this thing, because I wanted to do a little bit of everything here. That'll get us using a little bit of cloth sim or cloth dynamics. So what a, it's very easy. Literally the only thing you're doing here is adding another subtool, which is insert, let's go plane 3D. We get the idea, we can see what's going on. Let's rotate this 90 degrees. And you can see generally the size of this thing. Let's maybe make it a little bit bigger. Not really paying attention too much with the scale here, but we're just trying to get the idea. Now, paying attention to the resolution <clears throat> or the uh, subdivisions of this, this plane has everything to do with the folding or the crumples of this thing. So if we have something like this and we're going to try to make this thing just look crumpled, usually if you scale it down, nothing's gonna happen. This is the regular transpose tool. However, if you just do a quick activation of the BTC, which is transpose cloth tool, immediately we're getting some nice like cloth dynamics wrapping around this thing, and that's what we're going for. However, if you'll notice, this is chill, but if you do this, it's not reacting at all with the topology, and we kind of want that to happen, that'd be cool. So. Uh, to do that, we're going to enable dynamics, collision volume, that's super key. And while we're here, we're going to enable self collisions to a value of two. And we do want to make sure floor collision is on uh, because that's come time of making the still life, having it react to the floor and the chicken and all that stuff, it'll, it'll just look much better and work out. So now if we were to drag this up, we're actually affecting this topology uh, <clears throat> by, by colliding with the, the bottom biscuit. And that's kind of what we're going for. We're not going for this, but we're going for the collision. So this was, I try to make it as simple as possible just for this. And to do this, we're just barely going to react right here and maybe bring it up a little bit, just like that. And then uh, pressing D enables dynamic subdivision, so that's kind of fine. I didn't want to do too much, keep it pretty simple. Uh, sometimes I like doing cool things like going to the masking. I think it's in the masking, let's go. And then masking by feature. So if you mask by feature, it'll say, looking at the mesh, let's mask by the border, groups and crease. Right now we just care about the border. You can see it masks the whole border. And if we were to blur the mask a little bit, oh wow, that's a lot. Oh, invert, sorry, for to invert the mask and then blur it, invert it back. We can actually move this stuff and it won't be affected too much. Let me re-mask by feature. Uh, oh, sorry, not blur, let's grow the mask, there we go. Now if I were to do stuff like inverting, it's only gonna react to the exterior or the white part. So I could just move the white part, maybe twist it, have some cool dynamic looking uh, cloths here. And that's good. So I'm gonna go, notice the, the, the normals that are not facing, um, it goes invisible in ZBrush. And there are ways to combat that. You can go to display properties, double, 
or you can flip them obviously if you want to uh, want the normals to be flipped. Uh, but we're gonna keep it like this and I'm actually gonna go to the geometry tab, dynamic subdivision, add a little bit of thickness, a little bit more and apply. And so now we have some good topology. And if we were ever gonna put like a specular material on this thing, the refraction is gonna react better with thickness. It's just one of those things. Uh, so that looks good. And the last thing we're gonna do is making a sauce container or syrup, which will be pretty fun. Let's go sub tool, insert cylinder 3D. We're just gonna drag this to the side. Oh, we actually still have, you can see, that's, that's exactly what we're going there. And now we're finished. Um, yeah, so let's deactivate dynamics, collision volume. We don't need that anymore. Also, we don't want to be in the transpose cloth tool. Let's go BTR, which is the regular transpose. Drag this to the side. And you know those sauce containers you can get in any like fast food place. We're going to go ahead and first go to polygroups here, which essentially in ZBrush, you're the polygroups kind of describe different parts of the mesh that you want to uh, save for later or just uh, tag them with different qualities so you can use them later. And so we're going to go polygroups and group by normals, if I can find it. There we go. So now we see that based on the normals, we have a blue polygroup, purple, and a green. So we're going to hit control, shift, and tap on this polygroup, which hides every other polygroup. We're going to invert that by holding control and uh, dragging, control, shift, and dragging. And then we're gonna hide this one. So now all we're left with is the top, and that's the one we don't want. So we're gonna go control, shift, and drag like that. And then we're gonna go delete hidden. And I believe if you go to geometry, modified topology, you can delete the hidden polygroups, and that's perfect. So now it's, it's just, this is exactly what we want. Now we just want a nice taper here. Let's go to the gear icon and go taper, maybe bring it out a little bit. Now, this is great, except we don't want a curve. Uh, at least I've never seen a sauce container that looks like that, so we're going to just take this white guy here and there. Cool. Now we're going to accept, and once we're here, we can just take this scale value, and it's really easy to be like, okay, let's just make sure we got the right value here. So you don't have to be too finite with the um, the taper. That looks good. Now we need some, uh, we want to see what this looks like with dynamic subdivision. So if we were to activate dynamic subdivision, that's good. We would probably want to get rid of some of this artifact. So I'm just going to add a quick edge loop here. Going to BZM. I love ZBrush's uh, hard surface tools, Z modeler and, uh, specifically. And if you were to highlight a, over a face, edge, or point, it gives you different options if you hit spacebar and hold down. So we're just gonna go above a, a uh, edge here, hold down spacebar, insert single edge loop, just drag this out a little bit. And the closer we get this edge to the, or this edge loop to the edge here, it's gonna be a harsher uh, fall off here. So we're gonna add one there and one here. And we can see nice edge loop versus, if we were to take this, let's go to slide, edge loop complete. If we grab hold of this, while it's in dynamic subdivision, you can see what it's actually doing here. And if I drag this all the way out and this one all the way out, we're getting a really, you can see what's happening in real time. Thought that'd be good to show. Oops. So let's drag this back here. That should be good. Uh, and then once we're here, let's go dynamic subdivision. Right now we are, are we are in dynamic subdivision mode. Let's go thickness, bring it all the way up. Just get a little bit of thickness in here. Um, let's go no smooth subdivision. We don't need that. We just want a little bit of thickness and that should be good, maybe a little bit more. Again, the only reason why I care about this is because when we add like a specular material that has any sort of refraction, uh, having any thickness at all, especially, is going to help with the refracting. So we're going to go here, highlight this edge, polygroup, or actually not polygroup, we're going to go Q-mesh, poly loop, drag this out. And now when we just uh, subdivide, we get a nice little sauce container here. 
works for me. And uh, I think that's to scale, right? Oh, you said the sauce container is too small? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Bucket of chicken? There we go. <laughs> okay, that looks chill. Um, let's go ahead and move on. This next part is how we fill this with sauce, whatever sauce we're doing that. And we're gonna take advantage of the actual mesh of the sauce container. So what we're gonna do is, let's just uh, collapse this down and apply this and kind of do what we were doing last time, selecting these poly groups. I'm gonna go control shift. Actually, before I do this, let's duplicate this and call this saucy sauce fam. Chill. All right, cool. Um, now that we have that, we're going to select just this. This one, actually, did I uh, collapse this down? Yes, I did. We're gonna control shift these two, again, inverting this uh, poly group. So now let's get this guy as well. Inverting this. This is what we want, if that made sense. Um, we want the inside here and we don't want anything else because this is gonna turn into our sauce. And just so we don't have to recalculate and make sure we are perfectly in here, we wanna use the geometry to our advantage. And once we have that, let's go modify topology, delete hidden. And that's exactly what we want. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is just flip the normals because if we're gonna add a top to this, it's not gonna show unless we flip the normals. So we're gonna go here, make sure we can see what we're doing. Uh, I'm actually gonna slice off some of this. There we go. And then I'm actually going to modify topology, delete hidden again. And if I go to the display properties and flip, uh, that's what we're looking for here. So now we can see the mesh from the outside. And now all we do is go to geometry, modify topology, close holes, and that should close up this hole with this beautiful topology here. It's textbook. Uh, and just to reel it back in, which dynamesh this real quick. So we got some nice sauce action here. And because the scale is bigger now, we're getting, with the same resolution, a much more uh, dense sauce. So essentially what we're gonna do here is just polish this. Let's go deformation, polish. And you can see that just took care of a lot of stuff we didn't wanna worry about. And while, while we are at this specific stage, we're gonna group these two things into a folder. Subtool, let's go, let's kick the outer layer first. New folder, sauce. We're gonna drag this guy up here. Now to move both these objects at the same time in the same hierarchy, we're gonna go to this gear, transpose set. You see the other stuff is grayed out. I'm just gonna move this over, actually make it smaller. Just make it, oh, that's not what I want. Just make it look like it's pouring on there. Nothing too crazy. Keep hitting that. Whoa. That is not what I wanted. All right. Let's go over here, drag it. Again, let's get a good, a good pour here. Make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's still too big. There we go. Now we're gonna click this guy and it's going to just collapse everything. Now we can move everything individually. Can I not just move this? Oh, I zoomed in it? How would I do that? What's up? Oh, thumbnail. Oh, there we go. Thank you. That, see, I just learned that. I was dragging that thing over. I appreciate that. Cool. Uh, so now we're here, we're in a good spot. We got this sauce here and it's looking really dense. We don't need it to be that dense, but I think since we shrunk it down, we can just re-dynamesh and it should be good just like that. Um, now we're gonna go control shift, go to our selection tools. Let's go to the knife curve and just take everything here and just clip it out, maybe on like some sort of angle here. Uh, and everything with the shadow, notice the shadow's facing up top, gonna let go, it's gonna cut everything there. And then Control W to just make everything one polygroup. 
Redynamesh, already looking like it's flowing out a little bit. Let's go over here. I kind of like doing crazy stuff with, with Saw sometimes. And what I mean by that is if I go to the BDS, the damn standard tool, just kind of mess it up a little bit. Again, this is kind of abstract. You're gonna go B, S, and where is the spiral? J, I guess, taking this value really down, the intensity down to like three. Sometimes I like to make the, uh, the sauce kind of do some crazy stuff right there. Whatever looks cool. And then just uh, masking a little bit of this off. Let's go back to the regular mask pen. Inverting the mask, just moving this out a little bit, just enough to where I can take it with the snake hook. Boom. Redynameshing, and we can see we're in good hands to drip the stuff on. So let's go B S H to the snake hook. Again, skipping this note until restart. Probably should have done that from the beginning. Turning on Sculptures Pro and immediately, boom. There we go. Uh, and some might, I wanna make this look like it's like kind of crowding over the, the sandwich. So I'm just gonna inflate this a little bit, turning off Sculptures Pro. This is gonna look crazy for a second, but trust me. Just like that. So that doesn't look real yet, but uh, we're gonna do the same technique we used last time. Let's go to the scale tool. Let's uh, hold down Alt and reset this axis and maybe move this somewhere just out of the way so we can see what's going on. Going into transparent mode so we can see it's kind of dipping below, holding down Control and just dragging up a little bit. And then we can kind of pick where we want that to redynamesh. And then this is kind of like a little cheat. If I go to BMT, I just have fun with this and go drag it all the way out. You can see where this, and you can see since we're in transparency mode, we can see kind of like the the circle of the, the mesh here with the cloth. So as long as we're kind of dragging along that, we should be good. Looks good to me. Let's read Dynamesh. Then here's just like a finesse game. BMT for the transpose uh, or the move topology brush. Dragging the stuff out, making it look all nice and uh, saucy. We love the sauce. Dragging this out, following the topology. And I always like this stuff because all the food has subsurface scattering either way. So if it dips into some of the biscuit, if anything, it makes it look more realistic a lot of the time. So I go to the inflate brush. Let's go here. Oops. Probably turn off transparent mode at this point. Finesse in it. Thought maybe put an Easter egg in here. So if we're going over here. Let's go over here. Mask pen. Little N N A B brand. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's go over here, drag this over here, invert the mask, and going to the deformation tab, inflating, and then an inflate balloon. And now you got all those details there, I thought that'd be cool. Just a little Easter egg there, boom. So it theoretically would shine a little bit through the syrup. And then once we're here, I usually just drag off a lot of this, a lot of this part here. Boom, make it nice and saucy. You're finessing it. Redynameshing. And okay, I gotta keep looking at the time here. I'm gonna inflate. And I'm just gonna uh, dynamesh here, making it super simple. Let's go half. Already much better topology, uh, using a little bit of dynamic subdivision, taking off thickness. Sometimes it remembers your settings for last time, uh, but we don't need to worry about thickness. We just want it to be smoother. Cool. 
Looks good. And once once we have this going on, we can just like kind of hold down shift, taking off Sculptures Pro, and however thin you want this, just go crazy. Cool. And that's pretty much it in ZBrush. We're gonna hop into cinema for a second, but that's just like really quickly having like a full on still life um, with within like 30 minutes or something like that, 35 minutes. Uh, so let's hop into cinema for just the last part of this. I pulled in the other project file. You get the idea. We won't have like the triple decker sandwich or anything, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, the idea here is pretty simple. What I did was having a bunch of these crumbs here I think I actually made them in ZBrush, just spheres, reverse inflate with the noise like we did before. And then I used dynamic place within Cinema 4D to uh, do that. I don't think I need this stylus anymore. Um, and for those of you who have not used the dynamic uh, place tool yet, that has got to be one of my favorite, if not my favorite tool in Cinema. So we're going to go Shift-C, dynamic uh, place. Boom, and it's gonna kind of calculate everything real quick. I should probably be in this mode. And then based on, I should be able to theoretically bring this stuff up. Oh, I think it's still calculating. Dynamic place. Yeah, theoretically it should be like loading up right now so that we can move this, collide it with the object. It's not like a fully dynamic system, but it should be like you're able to move these things around and they collide in real time. Um, and that's usually what's supposed to happen. We're getting a little bit of a, a thing here. But usually when you select them and you're in dynamic places uh, kind of functionality window here, all this stuff loads. Right. Well, you get the idea. That should be good. Um, I just have a simple plane in the background, which I hid right here, just like this. And uh, I'm at the point, once the lighting was set up, I'm using an HDRI from my store, P40.store. I use them for every single one of my renders. Um, but you can see, as, as I change the background, everything's kind of bleeding out. You got the nice uh, global illumination going on. And uh, no matter what color we use, it kind of fits. So it's hard to pick a lot of times which color to use for this stuff. I stuck with red, I think that looks fine. I said we make a little bit of the sauce. We spent a lot of time making the sauce. So let's get in there to the Octane node window. I think I opened that up already. Let's go. Node. Octane node editor, there we go. Oh yeah, it is, load it up, cool. So uh, what I wanted to do here is kind of make a new material. And a lot of the times I'm starting always, it doesn't matter what material it is, glass, some refraction, some specular, doesn't matter what material. I'm using a octane composite material because it just gives me so much flexibility right off the bat. Uh, so I can add on materials to it. So I'm gonna just drag this on this material, drag it on this mesh here. And once we're in the node editor, everything that happens Let's go to, here we go. Here's the composite material. I start this with every single food product. I'm just gonna drag a material here, which will give me a sub-material. I think that's the only one you can use. Uh, and right off the bat, we can see, if I were to change this, it should be loading. Sometimes when you put the note, node editor on a separate tab, it doesn't load right away. So I'm just gonna reload this scene so we don't have any of those problems. There we go. All right, now we see that it's working. We don't want to have any color on this right now. Right now we're in a basic glossy material, but we want to change that to a specular. Immediately we're going to start looking like we got uh, some nicer materials here. Let's go to the common tab, fake shadows. That's going to allow all this light to bleed in. Um, and that's, that's really important with the, the sauces or any kind of like glass-like te texture or anything like that. That's what we want. Uh, and the last thing is let's add a medium scattering medium. There we go. Drag in an, an absorption color, RGB spectrum, of course. And that's just essentially giving us like a color swatch we can pick from. And if we're making, uh, actually, what should we make? Syrup or honey? Gravy. Gravy, okay. Interesting. I, I was gonna pick either syrup or honey. Gravy would be pretty much 
Should we do gravy? Gravy? Okay, cool. Um, so if we're doing gravy, I guess we're doing, we would want it to be white, of course, if it's the kind of biscuits and gravy I'm thinking. And then we just want a scattering. So let's go float texture. Boom. Immediately getting that gravy vibe. Actually, that's definitely not gravy vibe yet. That's interesting. It's, it's an interesting texture. Um, so we get more gravy. I think we're going to want to add some bump. So we're going to go and add a little bit of a bump. Let's go octane noise. I don't want to go too, too over the time here. But we should be good just by adding. And then we can solo this node by right-clicking solo. You can see what's going on here, making it a little bit more punchy with the gamma. And let's go here, projection transform. Take this down a little bit. Boost the value up. Disable solo mode. Let's see what's happening. And uh, I believe gravy, I feel like gravy has a little bit of like a yellowish, like it's not like pure white, is it? Yeah, let's start with that. And then we want it to be much more like chunky and less like liquidy. So we're gonna add some displacement. Let's go displacement. This looks disgusting right now. Let's go displacement right here. And we're gonna add a, let's change some of these settings. Let's go texture, vertex, height to vector, object to tangent. Let's go octane noise again and see what happens. Oh, nice. Look at that. Now we'd want to do take this value all the way down to like one or something. And you can see if we were to solve this node is what we're getting. Let's take it to like a turbulent, something crazy. Projection, transform. Let's go mesh UV to XYZ to UVW. This one's good if you don't have to like animate or like deform any of these objects. Um, and if you do, you're kind of screwed because it won't like project correctly. But for me, I think it usually works. I'm gonna take this float all the way up so it looks a little bit thicker. We're kind of getting there. And then maybe taking the transmission to a, let's go, let's do a mix. Octane noise. RGB, let's get some color variation here. I feel like gravy's got a bunch of weird, weird stuff going on in there. Let's go projection, transform. Kind of getting down to the wire here on time. But essentially, usually I'd just be stacking a bunch of these nodes in um, and kind of seeing how everything reacts in real time. And on the Discord server, I'm, I'm able to do this stuff much more kind of casually with like no time limit. That's the only thing. Yeah, this is either going to look really good or really terrible based on the noise. Okay, there we go. Uh, and you can kind of see if we were to take the, the displacement, maybe bump this up to two, get it a little bit chunkier there. Let's take the mid-level to 0.5. Okay, maybe not 0.5. Let's go a little bit back there. Um, okay, cool. Let's go height to maybe four. Okay, now we're getting that chunky stuff. It's looking better. It's, uh, I'd probably have to work with it a little bit, but you're essentially just mixing color values until you're getting that right texture. And a lot of times that's a finesse game um, until we get to the finish line. So I think just to finish it off uh, so we don't go over time, let me just go back to deleting a lot of these nodes and just make like a simple what do you call it? Uh, simple syrup or simple refractive honey. Let's take this out. Now we're back to where we want to be here. Don't need that color mix. Um, we need a, a float. So let's take this all the way down and take this to, that would be like a honey or something like that. Or if we wanted a uh, syrup, let's go transmission RGB. Adding a tiny bit of red, but we want like kind of the middle of this stuff to be almost black. So we would take up the density. Let's go from 100 to like 600. 
boom. And, and immediately we're getting like that kind of like bronze, dark, reddish, but in the very thick of it, it's kind of looking like that dark black. And that's what we're going for. And like really quickly, not even messing with like the refraction, you could just to show you kind of what it would look like. If you have zero refraction, it just looks like a stain or something like that. But if you just go to like a 1.5, I think that's some syrup has to be somewhere around there. We're getting a lot of that magnification of the, the lighting there. And that's what happens with syrup. And um, yeah, that's that's essentially it. I feel like going back to this, I wish I could have gone to uh, the, the chicken a little bit more, but we are getting to that timeline. Um, are you doing the shit out of it? Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. Every single day I do one of those things on the fly in Discord. I don't even know what I'm making beforehand. That's every morning. That's discord.gg slash p4d. And um, here's some of my links here on my Instagram. Um, that's kind of where I'm most active. But this was super fun. I appreciate Maxon having me out. And uh, I should be in the back later on uh, for, for some demo stuff. And uh, that's it. Thanks, man.